Hello there and welcome. So this video is about filtering. So what is filtering then? I get asked a lot by students about filtering and whether it's okay and whether it's legal. Well it is. There's no legal definition of filtering. It's the nearest would be overtaking. And when considering whether to filter or not, I always use the risk versus reward balance. So I consider what the risk is by doing it and I consider what I'm going to get out of it, what the reward is. And the reward has to be high and the risk has to be low. And as that balance starts to shift to high risk, low reward, I just decide I'm just going to go with the traffic. So when we filter, we should only be filtering past traffic slightly higher speed than the traffic we're going past. And as a rough rule, if the traffic's doing about 15 to 20-ish miles an hour, you're generally off better not filtering at all and just letting the traffic take you naturally. If it's stationary, it's nice to filter. And if it's crawling along where you can, it's also nice to filter and make some gentle progress. So we're gonna keep riding and I'll show you some video clips on filtering and some little hints and tips to help you make steady but safe progress through heavy traffic. So our key skills for filtering, excellent all-round awareness and observations, excellent slow speed control techniques, and excellent hazard perception in relation to filtering. We've got to look at the areas like this developing here they are high risk. The junctions do put you at risk quite highly. So let's look at some diagrams now to highlight some of the areas that can cause us the biggest issues whilst filtering. And these are common areas that we need to be aware of. One of the first problems that motorcyclists often do is they get too close to the vehicles they're passing. Now sometimes we have to be relatively close, but the closer we are to these vehicles, the slower we must go, so that we've got time to react. In an ideal world, we do want to create as much space as is possible. And when vehicles are stationary, we sometimes get the risk that somebody may open a car door. This may be to deal with the children in the back of the car or to get something out the boot. It does happen, so you must be on your guard of such things happening. Of course, if you're very close to that vehicle, it would cause you a problem. And you may just strike the door, or you may swerve and go in front of oncoming traffic. Either way, it's not helpful. Vehicles very often do U-turns. They tend to be out of frustration, and drivers can often turn carelessly without using effective rear observations. If you're too close and too fast, you will fall victim to this very, very rapidly. So, temporary traffic lights, two vehicles in front on the brakes, and that vehicle is just overtaken, coming up behind. Considering a filter, making sure those lights don't change and the car doesn't pull out in front of me before I get there. Or do a U-turn, of course. When filtering, do not cause oncoming vehicles to take avoiding action. Everything you do must not affect another road user. So if you can't filter without causing vehicles to move over for you, don't filter. It's different where other drivers are courteous and allow that to happen, that's fine, but don't cause it. One area to be particularly concerned of is where the vehicle in front of you is high or wide and you do not have a good view of the road. This is particularly the case on left-hand bends. There may be an obstruction further up the road and the vehicle may pull out without checking its mirror sufficiently and you may get involved in a side swipe incident. Be aware of this and try and maximise your view at all times so you can be aware early of any vehicles that are parked or broken down. Junctions, driveways and entrances and exits to premises are something we've got to be very careful of when filtering. And if the lead vehicles around the junctions are high and wide, 
the view that you have of a junction will be particularly poor and this heightens your risk. So one common situation is where the lead vehicle in the queue of traffic nearest the junction decides that he will flash out a vehicle waiting at the junction. This vehicle then leaves the junction without paying good attention just as the motorcyclist is filtering and a collision occurs. Yet again this is why as you approach the junction you must reduce your speed to almost a walking pace and be prepared to stop or maybe not even filter across the junction at all. So where there is a junction to the right there is always a risk that the vehicle will turn right. You should never overtake across a junction in this way. This is very very dangerous but when filtering you need to be particularly careful that you do not pass a vehicle that may turn right without checking effective rear observations or even signalling. Another incident that may occur is that a vehicle may emerge from a junction to the right into your path. Whilst those vehicles are supposed to give way to traffic on the major road, it is an area that you must be aware of because very often drivers do not look in the direction of the turn. They purely look to their right whilst turning left. The next thing you know, you're going across the bonnet of the car. Another area to be very, very careful about when filtering is not to get yourself in the middle of the lanes where you could get trapped. So where the two vehicles pull away simultaneously, you may find that you're going into a diminishing gap. And that is a very uncomfortable and frightening experience. You can see here, especially with a large goods vehicle, if the vehicle's timing is unfortunate, you have absolutely nowhere to go. And this is the same with traffic lights. So these techniques can, if used well, be very, very helpful. But for new and inexperienced riders with poor timing, with poor assessment, they are potentially dangerous. Because the two vehicles moving away at the same time as you could bring you into a pinch point. But as we can see here, if it all comes together and is timed and assessed correctly, it can be a very successful technique, but it is an advanced technique. Let's look at dual carriageways and motorways now. So when filtering, we would have to filter between the two lines of traffic. We don't want to be filtering to the left of the vehicles in the left lane, and in an ideal world we don't want to be filtering towards the right of the vehicles in the right lane. So the middle of the lanes are best. Do be aware, many motorists will not be checking their mirrors, will not be checking their blind spots, and may open doors or move their vehicle without checking first. This is another reason why your speed must be low. One area to be particularly concerned about when moving in low speed traffic on dual carriageways and motorways is where you can see a gap. And this could be in lane one or lane two as shown here. This gives a vehicle in the other lane, i.e. here in lane 1, the opportunity to suddenly change lane. And people are very often keen to make progress, so they're unlikely to check their mirrors. As you approach that gap, if you are passing the gap as they do this manoeuvre, you will be hit. The other thing to be aware of as well in these circumstances is one or both vehicles, sometimes they just move around within their lane. Sometimes it's deliberate to stop the motorcyclist from filtering and sometimes it's just not paying proper attention to what they're doing. If that gap starts to reduce you don't want to reach a pinch point which could cause you a big problem. So when talking about speed for filtering, approximately speaking anything above 15 mile an hour just go with the flow of traffic. Don't try and filter. I've often seen motorcyclists filtering in traffic that's doing 55, 50 miles an hour on motorways between lanes 1 and 2, 2 and 3 and 3 and 4 you're really putting yourself at risk of something bad happening because at those speeds with those proximities to those vehicles if something goes wrong you've got little chance to react and deal with the problem and unfortunately if you are involved in an incident it's very likely that it could be considered that you were driving without due care and attention and therefore you are committing an offence but more importantly it's your life at stake. So when filtering, 
we need to try and have as much space around the vehicles as we can. Now the closer you have to be to a vehicle, the slower you must go. So we work in a stepping stone routine. So in other words, when I'm assessing the traffic ahead of me, I'm looking for safe gaps that I can return into. I must not get myself on the other side of the road and force oncoming vehicles to take evasive action, no matter how small. Now some drivers are very kind and they will make a little bit of extra space for you, which is great. So even though I might stay out sometimes and overtake and filter past several vehicles in one go, in my mind I'm looking at passing each vehicle as an individual. And if those vehicles are too close, I have to be able to get into the gap ahead of the bunched up vehicles. So if I can't, I can't filter. You've always got to be aware that some vehicles don't like being filtered past and they get a bit strange and they do odd things like they might move out and block your path a little bit. So we have to be very careful in that respect. So you've always got to have somewhere to go and just gauge how the traffic flow is going. Just work your way through very gently. That blue car has just moved over a little bit for me, so I can get in front of the van before that oncoming car reaches. We've got a lovely gap. Now, of course, the bus is so wide. So filtering past the bus with the way the traffic is at the moment is dangerously close. So I've almost got to concede that I can't go past the bus unless I get a good bit of clearance from the oncoming traffic. The other thing you've got to be so careful of when filtering is junctions and driveways. A lot of people won't see you, you'll be hidden behind vehicles and that's another reason why it's so good not to get too close to the vehicle in front because you need to hold that vision open. And so very often one of the main causes of accidents for filtering in urban areas is a junction where the car ahead flashes another vehicle out of a side road just as the motorcycle filters past the traffic and of course that car then comes out, doesn't see the motorcycle and collides. So I've got a gap in front of this silver car behind the bus but it would put me so close to the bus I just don't really want to go there at the moment. So I'm just going to hang back and keep my view open. If I get really close to that bus I'll have no view of the road ahead at all and there's no point. Of course before we go out for a filter we have to check our mirrors because there may be someone else filtering behind us and they might not be as cautious as we are. They might just come flying up behind you and you don't want to be in a situation where you pull out and collide with them. So if you're going to filter through traffic on roundabouts, do it with a great degree of caution because people very often get impatient, change their minds and will suddenly swap lane mid roundabout without rear observations. see how that gap just tightens up massively with that lorry there. I've got no one to my left hand side so I can consider using the left lane. Always looking for the gaps. Now as we approach the roundabout where I intend to follow the road. See he's got his indicator on so I'm just going to hang back here a little bit. Right there's my little gap. So I'm trying to set myself up early so that I've got a sensible position to go ahead. I'm not even going to filter up there with him with his right indicator on. He might have left it on. He might actually turn onto the roundabout late. Yeah, see. Best practice, err uh, on a side of caution. So I'm just going to take the one vehicle to start with. I'm just going to hang back here just so I've got some view of the road ahead, which is to the left. If that view gets significantly better when I'm clear of the crossing, I'll consider doing the blue one as well, which I'm going to do now. Just going to sneak past this heavy. Very gently, there's an entrance to a car park there, so caution. We'll just gently work our way up. There's a lovely gap to go into. 
I'm looking all the way through that bend to decide whether I can just gently come through here. Bit of a rut in the road there to be aware of. Yeah, I can do a couple. Yeah, I'll do another one. Gaps behind the white one. It's quite a way over, but I've got a gap because of the lorry. It doesn't put me too close, which is quite nice. Not going to pass him on the crossing, which is not allowed. But I am going to go past once we're clear of the crossing. Now, can I get to the island? Yeah, so what I was planning there is, could I get in front of that white one prior to the island? Well, it would have just been a bit untidy, but I can just do it now because we're coming to a real slow situation. And I'll just take that gap as we come through there. Got to watch the island, watch the curbs. You'll be particularly careful if you're filtering at night. You can't often see these curbs. And don't forget, other road users at night, your headlight will just blend into the sea of other headlights. They won't see you at all. Got the red traffic lights there, so I can come past this bus. Let's have a bit of room. Make sure there's nothing in front of him. No, that's all good. Just gonna sneak up and just drop behind one of these two. So thinking about a little bit of filtering here, if you just look at the road width, because they've put that bus lane in there, the road isn't really wide enough with oncoming traffic. Even with a little 125, I wouldn't be attempting that. You know, I've deliberately come out on the RT today because a lot of people say, well, when you ride a bike like that, you can't filter, it's too big, it's too wide. Well, it isn't. And there comes a point where it doesn't matter what size or how thin your bike is, to filter is dangerous, or potentially dangerous. We all like to make a bit of progress. No one likes being stuck in traffic. But it's got to be done with care and courtesy. So if I just keep back here, just keep my view open. I mean, you see, look at that car there. He's, he's right over. It's great. You know, I could potentially have filtered that. He's been great as well. You know, look, at they're all, actually, they're all been really good. But I didn't risk it because there's going to be a car that isn't going to notice, that isn't going to be considerate, and then I'm going to be in trouble. He's moved over a little bit, which is lovely. I'm just going to pop through this little gap. And I'm going to give him a little thank you. And that just worked nicely, just the one, but it's better than nothing. Now I've got a chance, but that bus is, he should stay in the bus lane, so I will just pop past this first one. There's my gap. I'll do another one, there's that next gap. That's lovely, that just worked out nice and tidy. And tidy is a word I use quite a lot in training. If you're hard on the throttle, hard on the brakes, chucking the bike about, you're not really doing it right. It should all be fairly smooth and unobtrusive certainly shouldn't interfere with another road user and I do like a little bit of courtesy traffic's moving quite well so that's the end of that set of filtering so we're just gonna have a little filter up here just looking for the gaps yet again now one thing when you filter you've got to be really aware of if you get something wrong insurance companies or maybe even courts will look very carefully at your actions and I see a lot of motorcyclists filtering very, very fast. You shouldn't do it. You leave no room for error if you go too quickly. Five mile hour progress is better than zero mile hour of progress. And a little bit of patience is worth it. Better five minutes late than dead on time. Give yourself time to think, give yourself time to react. Other drivers don't always see you, so you need to be as visible as possible and allow them the chance to react to you as well. You should never filter on the left hand side. They really won't expect to see you. So don't filter up the pavement side. Thank you. Very nice gentleman, let me move over there. 
Now I don't want to get alongside the heavy, they can swing a little bit wide on turns. So we're just constantly assessing and reassessing. And another reason why we don't get too close to things is that when things change, which they will, situations develop, it gives you the chance to react. If you're right up against something and you're committed, you're stuck. So if one vehicle lingers a bit longer than normal and everyone else gets moving and there's your gap and you're stuck next to the lingerer, you have got no chance of taking advantage of that newly created space. Keep yourself really updated. Keep that head moving. Don't just rely on your mirrors in slow urban traffic. Those lifesavers are important. In fact, I wouldn't even say I'm doing lifesavers. I'm just looking around. I'm just enhancing my 360 awareness. There's no point in trying to get that bike to go somewhere where there's no gap. looking for the opportunity all the time so that bus driver he's, he's seen me I'm just looking at that BM he's gonna go there I am gonna just take that little advantage so I'm gonna stay behind the white car I could have filtered but up past that white car behind the heavy but being so close to the heavy would have given me a restricted view so I'm quite comfortable back here we're up to about 15 mile an hour now anyway 15 mile an hour is quite respectable through the town. I'm quite happy with that. No problems there at all. So we're taking good observations all around. Now we need to keep a high awareness up. And if we're going to filter, we've got to filter very slowly. So with the stationary traffic, I'm at 10 or less miles an hour. So we're just looking for gaps, any gaps that might open up that we can just snick into. Now as we get close to the roundabout itself, and especially with that heavy there, I don't want to get too close. So I don't really want to be three vehicles abreast at the roundabout, not with a large vehicle. And this roundabout here is very odd because it goes from three lanes into two immediately on the roundabout. Now I could move up there a little bit, but it's going to put me quite close to that heavy, so I'm going to decide just to sit back. Although the bike will fit, I don't really want the risk. Now he's going to move forward, I am turning right at this roundabout, so I'm going to hold my position. But now I could possibly filter around the roundabout. I don't want to get too close to the heavy. So on some days you might be able to go out to that left side, but not when you've got a large vehicle. So I'm already looking around the roundabout. I don't know where this red car's going. He's probably exiting, but he's not using any signals. Now I'm gonna turn right here and join him with that queue again. So we've got that large goods vehicle stationary on the roundabout, so we can keep it nice and gentle. There's the gap. It's gonna come in nice and slow. This is a bit of a pinch point, so I need a gap. Let's just gently work our way through. So I've already decided I won't be going alongside the, the heavy. So all the time we're just looking for gaps. Now if we get a massive gap, we have to be very careful that the vehicle on the other lane doesn't decide to choose that gap. Now you can see that traffic queue up there is moving. If I come alongside this heavy and he moves, quite unnerving. Right, I'm just going to sneak along here a little bit keeping the observations all the time. The other thing you've got to be careful of is the road's a little bit rutted and you need to be careful because that can throw you, just throw you off. Now I can probably just sneak through that gap there and get away from the heavy. That's a little bit tight because the white Ford's quite a way over in his lane. And this is where you need that slow speed control technique. And say so the middle of the road here is appalling. So I'm having to use very careful balance. Now that BMW is going to put me tight on the van, so I'll just let that one creep forward. There's the gap, just want to sneak into that little gap there. And you just see these gaps, they'll just suddenly appear and you just gently take advantage of them without going mad. Just keep picking your way through. 
considering a horn warning if necessary and some people have got their windows open so they'd hear that horn warning if you needed it, to use it this is very tight here these two are quite in the middle of their lane that jeep's gonna move but there's the gap which I'll have and then I'll just take that gap there keep your head and eyes well up now this gap isn't good enough for me so I will sit here how lovely for that car to move now I'm gonna give a little thank you for that if it's if I can thank you it's just a little bit tight on here again yeah we can do that one gently through that one's moved over thank you won't be going past that lorry because that's very tight indeed keeping yourself aware all the time 360 awareness so we're going to go ahead at this roundabout so the roundabout's queuing itself I don't want to get too close to the heavy so what I'm probably going to do now is to start to dominate my lane so I've got my lane that's mine now I'm always going to reconsider the chance to filter I'm not going to forget about it because things change but at the moment that lorry is going to stop me from doing anything that's safe So as we, as we filter around traffic like this, keep a very close eye on the other vehicles and whether they could turn into you. So I'm creating space and just looking for those points where two vehicles are going to come together and I'll run out of room. We've got to make sure that we don't put ourselves in jeopardy at any point. So one question I do get asked is, can I filter over a solid white line? And the answer is no, you can't. The highway code says we can cross a solid white line to pass a stationary vehicle if necessary and if it is safe. And the problem here is that filtering is not necessary. So you can see the solid white lines here on the approach to level crossing. If we were in a queue, like on the other side of the crossing there, we would only be allowed to filter as far as the second car back. We would not be allowed to cross that solid white line to filter. If you got caught, no doubt you would receive a fixed penalty and three points on your licence, which isn't worth it just to achieve a couple of cars' progress when you can't go anywhere anyway. Now the motorcycles behind me have filtered up, there's two of them, and they're in my blind spot. So when I move away, I've got to be careful that we don't have a problem. And of course they could filter, because, and there's a third one coming down as well. So they're able to filter because they haven't crossed the solid white line, they've just managed to pass the vehicles. But if a vehicle were to be way out there, then technically you're not allowed to do that. Now of course, with pedestrian crossings, you have to be very careful we don't break the law with those. So if a vehicle has stopped to allow people to cross the road, you can't filter past the lead vehicle on a crossing, and you cannot filter past a moving lead vehicle on a crossing. That's against the law, you mustn't do it. Well I hope you found some of the information contained in this video useful and it helps you to keep yourself safe. The thing to remember with filtering is just take your time, be very, very attentive, don't go too fast, and don't get too close to anything, and be highly aware of junctions. So until next time, ride safe, take care, and I'll see you again.